Uh, it is uh, the full circle on uh, SAFM with myself, Bridget Masinga, and we uh, continue our conversation with my guest now, Sisa um, Patswa, who is the head of education development at Kahiso Trust. Um, and of course, uh, they have announced a uh, uh, interesting competition, the Cecil and Gahiso Trust National Skills Competition, uh, which recently concluded, by the way, its uh, finals here in Johannesburg, uh, that was uh, spotlighting South Africa's next generation of skilled artisans. So uh, what is that all saying? We, we are a day and a dollar short, but uh, we can still reflect on uh, the competition nonetheless. How are you doing this afternoon, Sisa? Good afternoon, Bridget, and the listeners. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, let's reflect a little bit on, uh, you know, the uh, Cecil and Cajiso Trust National Skills Competition. Perhaps maybe let's get some retrospective context around uh, what is the competition or what what it entails. So, Bridget, maybe just to give a context why Kathy So Trust and Social Foundation, uh, this is in line with our organizational statement of igniting uh, human capacity, and we do that through partnerships and collaborations. And this one with Social is one of those uh, collaborations where we aim to uplift the technical stream within the educational framework of the three stream model by DBE. And we do that with the sole purpose of lifting up the T in the STEM, which is STEMI, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, and innovation. And with that, we hope that we are contributing, not that we are hoping, we know we are contributing to the development of the artisans in the country. Mm. And and very important uh, work, I think that is. Uh, it sort of uh, piggy banks on the conversation that I've just had, um, and and it plugs in quite beautifully as well to the national development uh, plan's goals for yes. producing thirty thousand artisans annually by twenty thirty. Yes, it, it does. It does in a way that this uh, is a skills competitions within the education and vocational education. It emphasizes the importance of the technical skills, but uh, alongside ensuring that as we do that, we have a goal. Why we are doing what we are doing, we want to contribute to the uh, NPP 2030 target of uh, 30 artisans annually. But also we believe that if people don't know what is it that is out there and they are not aware how it can contribute not only to them as individuals but to the country, then they won't participate. That is why we are igniting the passion at a very early stage from the learners so that they are inspired to pursue uh, the different vocations that are are within the space, including exploring uh, what are the career options that are there in terms of different uh, career pathways. But we also want to um, uh, to boost the, the talent that is already there, which might not have surfaced. And uh, using that, partnering with industries where our young people are exposed to different uh, latest industry machinery, including industry technicians that mm. are able to give them advice, but not only advice, also what they are doing, they know that it has a bigger goal in contributing to the development of the economy in the country, but not only development of the economy, but it has a potential of alleviating poverty because these are the young people that don't need to wait for university to start doing something. Mm. They can start as early as now uh, being entrepreneurs and becoming uh, employers. And, and starting their own businesses that can thrive. But also as a country, as we are working with the skills, we see an opportunity to take these young people to next uh, to, to, to higher platforms in the global state. Uh, Bridget, mm. this is our competitions, they happened just uh, immediately when the world skills ended. 
And we, we realize that where we are, we have a potential to also contribute to young people that can represent a, a South Africa in those uh, platforms. Yeah, uh, very important work in, indeed. And I think also it just does a lot for vocational careers, uh, which mm. oftentimes, especially in those, uh, you know, those adolescent phases of, of schooling, uh, oftentimes are not given this, the same kind of credit or the same kind mm-hmm. of PRing mm-hmm. as uh, you know other careers for instance um let, let let's talk also i read that uh, you know in in the, the the running of the program you found that um every year the number of girl learners who not only participate but also win the respective categories is actually escalating and and i mm-hmm. love that because i think it mm-hmm. says a lot about um you know female learners girl learners in these spaces that are oftentimes seen as more male focus more dominated mm-hmm. spaces mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. definitely and and by the way Bridget, this was the competition not only for the learners also for the teachers mm. because part of our support in, in in the education space with schools we focus around the teacher and we had teachers who were winning in the in the trades such as construction and this has previously been a male dominated area as we have said we have so many girl children winning also in these different trades that were, were not explored by women before and and that is exciting for us hence we always make sure that when we go to provinces we encourage the provinces that they must uh, encourage all teachers of all genders even from the learners to be part of this because as they do that it, it ignites the passion for the for the technical skills and they can see that it is not a skill or it is not traits that are gender based but anyone who is able and with the required resources you can do them Mm. Let's also focus a little bit on the long-term engagements of the mm-hmm. competition. Uh, what strategies, or are there already strategies in place just to maintain the engagement with, with participants beyond the, the build-up to competition and obviously yes. competition period? Yes. Part of what we've successfully done, uh, especially this year, we, we we started in fact in 2022. It was I think about three provinces, and uh, not so much uh, uh, big numbers. Last year, we the the numbers were fairly uh, good, but this year we increased the numbers to from five provinces to eight provinces participating. We are working with provincial officials, and we have also uh, increased the number of industry or businesses that. Have Organizations that continuously run multi. That were part of this uh, to about ten in this current year. These are the businesses that have given sponsorship, scholarship, sponsorship to the winners. They have also given apprenticeship to these uh, young people. And some of these learners, they are currently in grade ten or eleven. Mm. They already have an apprenticeship when they finish their grade twelve. We've got teachers that have received scholarship, which will also assist them in harnessing and honing their skill as they help learners to develop their practicals. Wonderful. Um, and, so and, so, yes. so the, the discussions are continuing because we're in partnership with the PE. We are in partnership with the industry. Whatever that we do, we make sure that it's not only for social foundation or Kafiso Trust, mm. but we embed this development within the education space, but also within the business requirements. Yeah. So that whatever we do, it's absorbed, absorbed at, a, at, a, at, a, at a particular level. And and by way of the engagement that you've had with participating um, schools and, and students and, and educators, what has been, and perhaps even just industry folks who have, who have plugged in to, to the competition, what have been some of the feedback, you, you know, from the various stakeholders, educators, participants, um, if, just speaking to maybe the continuous improvement of the competition uh, and perhaps the relevance of competitions like this in in these particular sectors and industries 
One of the greatest feedbacks that we have had is that um, the, the, the Department of Education uh, within the Technical Education Support Directorate led by MEDESRI, uh, there is currently a community of practice of technical teachers, a WhatsApp group, mm. that has about 724 teachers from all over South Africa participating in, in, in that group. And this is the space where teachers are supporting each other. This is the space that allows the department, because they don't have officials that can go to each and every district or circuit or province, to even conduct their teacher development support. But also for the teachers, we find that often they will be reaching out to say, is there anyone who can assist me on this one? It's removing the dependence. The teachers are starting to do things on their own, but also with the young people. We have received feedback from some schools that these young people have started to do their own businesses in their schools. There are those that uh, we got a report in Pumalanga. They are now uh, doing the price dance and selling them to the communities. And you can see that with further support and coaching and mentoring, these are the people that can really save this country and create more job opportunities. Also, the the increase of participation over the years, it is a testament to us that the teachers see value on this, the learners see value on this, and the participation of business in supporting the initiative. It also confirms the value added that they see. Mm. By way of um, our last point, Caesar, um, let's uh, quickly touch on, uh, and you mentioned, of course, uh, apprenticeship uh, opportunities for, for um, you know, competition participants and winners. Are we seeing more industry coming through to collaborate or opening their doors to collaborate um, and, and give opportunities not just to the competition winners, perhaps, but even extend future partnerships to, to students and participants? Definitely, we're seeing that. We have a lineup even uh, after the competition starting in, in, in this week of industries that have said, hey, come to the table, let's engage, let's see how we can contribute on this. So there is, there, there, there is a benefit, there is value that industry is seeing, and we are looking forward for more prospective partners that can collaborate and join us, not only as a once-off support, but in making sure that the technical stream is developed and it is given the attention and resources that it desires. Wonderful. Sisa, we appreciated the time with you this afternoon. Uh, that was uh, Sisa Mpatswe, Head of Education Development at Kahiso Trust, uh, just uh, giving us some feedback in as far as the uh, Sesol and Kahiso Trust National Skills Competition, which uh, already concluded. Uh, we are running up to the top of the hour and we're going to come back on the